Ha. On the 19th of uh, April, the year uh, 2007, I took a bold step of uh, early retirement. This is after serving or working in the tourism industry for a period of 20 years. Uh, during this time, I became a mother. I started my journey as uh, the journey of motherhood. Uh, but because of pressure of work, over time, I found myself being very absent in the, in the lives of my children. Uh, this entailed missing out on a lot of their milestones, not being there during some of the birthdays, and also, you know, just missing the school activities to the extent that some teachers actually thought one of my sons didn't have a mother. But uh, five years before then, uh, my heart had started to convict me that I needed to slow down a bit and I needed to be more present. And um, then there was a conflict because at this time I was running my own business. Uh, it was doing very well for those five years. And so this was not the time to stop. But I did. So I started this life of being a full-time mother. With it came a lifestyle change because out went the car, out went the holidays, and also even the bank account went. But the joy of being present in the lives of my children, especially at their teenage stage, cannot be compared with the loss that was suffered then. I'd like to call that season the season of limited uh, resources. Ah, then I went home now. I was a stay-at-home mother. And in there, there was a lot of issues also within the community. As I'm present in the lives of my children, I began to notice that my community needed some sorting out. And uh, it's because I live in a community, a gated community, which is fitted as the second largest community, gated community in East and Central Africa. We have a population of 20,000, uh, all housed in a, an estate of 5,000 houses. So one of the responsibilities I had was to go around and put the systems in place and put structures in place for governance so that we would have some order and also create a conducive environment where our children would grow. So in between all that, as I am setting up uh, the community, fast forward 2021, my children are all grown up. They've actually left home. I have become a grandmother at that time of a, grand, of a granddaughter who was five years then and my grandson who was three years then. I had purposed in my heart that when I get to that stage, I promise to be present this time around. So before I could do that, three years before, one of my friends got a baby and I dedicated myself as a full-time grandmother to that child. That meant that I was present in all her school activities. I made sure I visited this child every week. I was there during just all the important occasions that this child was celebrating so that I would practice uh, being a grandmother. So when my grandchildren came, I put some structures in place as well. Together with the mother, we agreed when Zoe, who is the first one, was nine months, that they would start coming home for sleepover and they would come without the house girl. So, the child would be dropped at, on a Friday and picked on Sunday without the house girl. So uh, we, I began that journey, enjoyed it. And one of the weekends, um, my friend, same friend, mother of that, the one that I had uh, tutored myself through, left her car with me. She went out of town and she left her car with me. So it happened that that weekend is when my grandchildren were coming. Hey, wow. I wish you were my friend. I called all my friends that were available, put my grandchildren in my friend's car, and we actually went out up to very late. We enjoyed the drive, we enjoyed visiting those who were available, and you know, my grandchildren were surprised. They were like, grandmother, you can drive. I think I must have been very ancient in their eyes. But I remember when we dropped the, I dropped them back home, uh, they were very excited, elated. They told their parents about, uh, the weekend adventure, how we were coming home at 1 a.m. in the night. But, um, yeah, so, but as they were leaving, because I had spent some time with them and I had taught them how to pray, I said, okay, I'm leaving, let me pray for you. I prayed for them and they prayed for me. But the young one called Zion was three years old then. And the only prayer he would utter, he said, 
God bless Shosho with her own car. Shosho is grandmother. God bless grandma with her own car. That really cut my heart because it opened up a chapter in my life that I had forgotten about and I had totally decided that that was not for me. So I left that house with a resolve and a goal that this car must become a reality. Now, on this other side of the community, I had become their go-to person. I was the help desk. If you're needing any information, you're told go to Martha. So if you're looking for a plumber, you're looking for an electrician, you want this number, that number, you called me. So I became the community help desk. So one of the nights I kind of got tired because some numbers would be posted on the WhatsApp platform, but people don't even care to scroll backwards. They just know if they call me, I have the number. And actually, as a matter of fact, any number that is posted on that platform, I would save it because I know tomorrow someone will ask for that number and I'll be required to, 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 to give it out. But in one of the night seasons, um, an idea just dropped. How about monetizing this need in the community and turn it into a business? I decided from that day that any time someone calls and they are requiring of any services, that I am the go-to person, I am the one-stop shop, and I am the one who does everything. So if you want a painter, an electrician, you want to do your tiles, you want to do this or the other, I mean, I'm that person because I'll go and look for the one who will do it. And therefore, I created a business model out of that. One negotiated the rates, the labor fees, with the fundies who tend to have a tendency to charge a lot more when you go directly to them. I got to know some hardware shops where I would go and negotiate good prices, also found out where the good deals are, especially in Kikomba. And then uh, we started work. So if you called, I would bring in the fundi, I would charge you the labor, good reduced, um, reduced or, or a good direct hardware shop rate, and charge you my service charge. So my service charge then ranged from 200 to 300 to 500, and the biggest job at 1,000. That also meant that I supervised, and people began to get very comfortable with me. At this time, I'm also remembering my grandson's prayer. Bless Shosho with her own car. So with this goal in mind, I saved every cent that I got. And up to some stage, I was able to raise up to 40% of the money that was required. Then a neighbor so happened to have bought a car, and he spoke to me and he said, look, with this kind of money that you're talking about, you could actually go to Mombasa, get a car, and then service the 60% from your proceeds, which is what I did. I got the car and had the monthly installments, paid in 18 months, and as late as November 2023, just the other day, I cleared my car. So that also meant that now I have a car. This year, the business has expanded new territories, overwhelmed by business. It means that uh, the money I was saving to pay off the car, I am still continuing to save it for lifestyle, for goodies with my grandchildren, self-care, and a few other things. So this is how I bounced back from retirement. Thank you. Wow.